Cold Curry stuff. You owe me is Ksubo stuff. And then, hey, Ksubo's 55. And we're going to start on the bottom of the Dawadam of Days, six lines from the bottom. That our Mishnah had said that the Chachamim, according to Tanakama, they state if, if the standard Ksuba is 200 or 100, depending on if you're a Besu or Amana, in Ratzalahosif, if the person, the husband, wants to add on, then he can add on. So, Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah says, we're going to see a dispute with Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah later on. But for now, he says if he wants to add on to the Ksuba, he can add on. So the Gemara says, Ratzalahotov lo katani. That the Mishnah doesn't say if he wants to write, he can write it, but it says he wants to add on. And from here, the Gemara is Medayek, the Gemara is inferring from this choice of words that this Hosafa is an addition, it's part of the Ksuba. That this extra part that he adds on is an additional part to the Ksuba, but it's also called the Ksuba. So therefore, the Gemara says, Messiah Rabbi Ibu. This is therefore a support for Rabbi Ibu's statement that what that Rabbi Ibu said in the name of Rabbi Yanai, the Amr Rabbi Ibu, Amr Rabbi Yanai, Tanai Ksuba, Kiksuba Dami. That, that, and here, Tanai Ksuba, Rashi tells us, doesn't mean a stipulation of the Ksuba, but it means a Tosefes, an additional part of the Ksuba. He, he stipulates to add on. And so this is like the other Tanai Ksuba, but this is an additional part. This is the addition he adds on, and that is part of the Ksuba. So what we're learning here is that the stipulations of the Ksuba, like for example, Rashi says, the fact that we have to, that the, that the husband's estate will support her. All these are stipulations of the Ksuba, but here we're talking about the additional money that he's promising her. All this is called the Ksuba, and it's not just a separate contract. It's part of the Ksuba itself. So the Gemara says, well, the Gemara says, well, why do we care what we call it? So the Gemara says, I'll tell you why we care. Nafkamina, that the, the reason why we care, the practical difference is because of, there are 14 possible Nafkaminas. There's a dispute amongst the commentaries whether this is an all-inclusive list or it's just examples. It's a dispute amongst the Rishonim, but we'll, we'll point out now that the, that the Gemara lists 14 different nafkaminas as to whether or not we, since we're calling this, this Tosefis Ksuba part of the Ksuba itself. The first one is Lemocheres. If a woman comes along and says she's selling her Ksuba, so we say that that includes the Tosefis Ksuba. That includes the additional parts of the ksuba. Number two is when mocheles, let's say a woman waves the rights to her ksuba. So she not only waves, not only waves her, the standard ksuba, she's also waived her additional parts to it. The third one is moredes. Moredes is a woman who is rebellious, the wife who is rebellious, and she's not sticking to the agreement of the marriage at the outset, which she was promised she promised to work a certain amount of hours each week. She promised and she commits to having marital intimacy with her husband and now she doesn't want to do that. So therefore we deduct from her the value of her kisuba. And so we can go all the way and this includes her tosefas kisuba as well. We penalize her money each week and that includes the tosefas kisuba. Next case is Ulipogemis, a woman who has said that she paid part of the ksuba, then she has to swear that the rest of it she was not paid. And this takes this is the law, even if she says she was paid part of the Tosefis ksuba, she has to swear until she gets paid for the entire ksuba. And also for Litovas, if a woman makes a claim for the ksuba in the Bezdin. Then, under those circumstances, we learned that the Chacham said, Ein la mezonus. We just said this on Amr Alaf and then Dawad Amr Alaf. And when she makes a claim for the Ksuba, she's being supported by the estate after her husband has died until such time as she makes a claim for the Ksuba. 
So now that she makes the claim for the ksuba, she doesn't get any more mazonos. And this quote unquote claim for the ksuba includes, includes even if she makes the claim for the tosefes ksuba, for the additional part of the ksuba. Says the next case. What's the next? The next nafkamina is Logaris Aldas, a woman who is in violation of Jewish law. We're going to learn examples of that in Parakam Madir. So such a woman is divorced and she loses her ksuba. So don't say that she only loses the standard ksuba, but she also loses the Tosefes ksuba. So that's the next case. The next, the next nafkamina, this is number seven, is Lishevach. That the and here Rashi helps us again as he always does. That a Gemara in Bechoros tells us that the Bechor, when the Bechor or firstborn gets a double portion, he doesn't take a double portion on the Shevach, meaning the increase in value of the estate after the father died. From the father's death until the distribution, the estate went up in value. So the firstborn gets a double share, but he only gets the double portion of the value when it was at the time of the death, but not the shevach, not the increase that happened to it. And also, a woman also doesn't get the increase if, let's say, the property went up in value, she doesn't get the increase from the, uh, in the ksuva. And also the tosefes, the tosefes ksuva is not collected from the shevach. And the tosefes is only collected from the value that it was worth at the time of the death, and so the next nafkamina is with respect to an oath. That we there are several circumstances where a woman would have to take an oath in order to collect her ksuba. And Rashi says, like for example, if the if the ksuba, if there's one witness who testifies that the ksuba was paid. So then the woman would have to take an oath before she gets it. So, or, or for example, she's collecting it from this from the estate. You always have to take an oath. So, so when we say that she requires an oath to take this, the to collect the ksuba, so too the tosefes ksuba also requires an oath. And now the next case is ulishvius, and for the sabbatical year, that we say that this the sabbatical year does not even though the sabbatical year cancels out loans in general, it does not cancel out the ksuba. I could cancel out other notes. It doesn't cancel out the ksuba. And so therefore, it not only does not cancel out the ksuba, it also doesn't cancel out the, the tosefes ksuba. And then now we're up to number 10, the 10th nafkamino, or kosev kol nechas avanos, so, let's say, uh, what is this? Somebody writes all of his assets to his sons. And so Rashi tells us the example here. So, the cause of Ishto Karka, let's say he writes all of his assets to his son and he writes a specific real estate that he's leaving for his wife as the Ksuba, in place of the Ksuba. Of the Ksuba, and if she sees there and she waves her rights, she's lost her Ksuba. And, and also she's lost her Tosefes Ksuba, her additional parts. Rashi tells us this is from Baba Basra 132a. And the next case is Minaziboris. The Ksuba is only collected, the, the woman only has the right to collect the Ksuba from the Ziboris. There are three types of property, Elias, Benonis, and Ziboris. Ziboris is the worst level, grade C real estate. And so she collects it from that real estate, and that also applies to the Tosefes Ksuba as well. That's collected only from the Ziboris because the Tosefes is part of the Ksuba. And then the Kol's Man Shehiva Be So this is a law Rashi tells us that we're going to get to on Kuf Dawid Amin Aaf. That we know that as long as she is in her father's home, as long as she's a widow, she can still collect her ksuva. I mean, means to say she, she's in her father's home and she can go, she could collect her ksuva, but, but that's only for 25 years. If she was quiet for more than 25 years, 
she has waived the rights to collect her ksuba. And this also applies to the Tosefes ksuba as well. And the last case, the last nafkamina is ksubas banin dechren with respect to the male ksuba, ksubas banin dechren. Now we say that the male ksuba is passed down uh, um, from the mother's father and, and to her sons. So too, this applies to the, to the Tosefes Ksuba as well. So too, this applies to the Tosefes Ksuba as well. Mara says, Inmar, we're on top of Nunhei Amin Aleph, Inmar Ksuba spun in different, the Ksuba of the male, the male children, the grandchildren, so we say such a case, Pumpadisya Amri Lutar from Mishabdi. You cannot collect that from property in which there was a lien on it, which which the let's say the the husband had sold. That's you could collect a regular ksuba from that, but according to Pumpadisa, you cannot collect the male ksuba from that. Why? Yartun Tanan, because it says in the ksuba, it refers to these people as Yartun, as heirs. Whereas B'nai Mata Mechasya, I mean, when the people of Mata they said, tar from me, Mishabdi, you can collect it from, you can collect it from uh, property which there was a lien on. Why? Yaspun Tanan, because it says the word Yaspun. Rashi says Yaspun is an expression of Baal Chov. It's an expression of a creditor. So you can take it from there. So then the Gemara says, um, the Gemara says, the Hilchasa will tar from me, Mishabdi, Yarasim Tanan. And but the law is that the Ksubas Banan Dichrin, you cannot collect from property where there's a lien on it because it calls them Yarsun, it calls them, uh, it calls them heirs. And so, therefore, just like heirs don't collect from property which there have been a lien on, which it was sold, so too the so to the ksuba spun in different cannot. And now we say another law, which it just has to do with metaltlin. Metaltlin the isno nayu. So let's say, so let's say there's a per, her her husband, her husband had dedicated a well read Rashi. Metaltlin isno be nayu. I mean yachin metaltlin ksuba ishto. A person had designated. His metaltal and his movable objects for the ksuba of his wife, who mace, and then he dies, the heim be'ain, and the movable object that he designated are, are, are right there, the nifras mehen, and she wants to collect the ksuba for them, no tolasan shalo he can, he can, she can take it without an oath. The time of my Amar Abana minechse is so men lo tifra el b'shvua, Rash says, because what's the reason? Why the rabbis say from the estate of the orphans, you're only allowed to collect with an oath. Techashinan Dilma Tsrari, Dilma because we're concerned that maybe he gave he gave a different movable object uh, in, in place of the ones that he had designated. And so there uh, for the loan, so that maybe he had paid it off. And here, this is specifically specifically the object that he designated for Ksuba, so he still has it. So So let's say there is a movable object and it's still in existence that he designated for the for the Ksuba. So under those circumstances, she can take it without an oath. But but if it's no longer there. That movable object that he designated, but Pumpadisa Amri and Pumpadisa they said, and Pumpadisa they said that he, she can still take it without an oath. But Rashi says, Rashi says the reason why she can take it without an oath is to keep in the avod. Hani loit fisir achrinei bechol nechasev achrayan l'tsuvasa v'nefreis minakarka. But since this lost, this object was lost, he didn't replace it. And all of his assets are, the ksuba is guaranteed for them. And so therefore she can collect it from the real estate. That's what in Pumpadisa they said, Belosh Whereas B'nai Matamachasio said, 
with an oath. Bishvua, they say that she can only collect it with an oath. And the law, the law in this case is she can collect it without an oath. Now we have the next case. Let's say he designated land for her to collect for Aksuba with four borders. Rashi says he designated real estate for her because of when he writes to her so he's and he writes to her these four borders uh, of this property is is going to be her ksuva and it's an apotiki for her ksuva. Apotiki is a piece of land you designate to make it even more secure. You're saying the ksuva is going to be collected from this piece of property. Umais, and then he dies. Uh, she says, Nifra se she can collect this from the heirs without an oath. Because for sure he didn't give her a different payment because he designated this very specifically. But but says the Gemara, Bechad Mitzra, but let's say he only left, he only designated one border from this from this real estate. He only designated one border. Then we're going to say, Pumpadisya Amri below Shvua, Bnei Matmachasi Amri Beshvua. Then but the people of Matmachasi said an oath would be required there. Why, Rash? says the Kivan, the Lokasav, since he didn't write all four borders, it's not sufficient to rely upon it. And because it's like he didn't designate a property and we have to be concerned that maybe he paid her off with something else already. So the Hilchasa Boloshvu and the laws you get to take it there without an oath. Amr Aidim, let's say he says to the witnesses, Kismu Vachismu. Let's say he says to the witnesses, write this document and sign it. Like, for example, he wants to give a gift of real estate, Rashi says. So he says to witnesses, write it and seal it, v'havuleh, and, and give it, v'havuleh. And he says, write it and seal it. And then after you seal it, he says, give it to the person as a gift. Kanumine. Indeed, we're going to say that that is a valid acquisition. And you don't need to ask, the witnesses don't need to ask the man who's giving the gift if he still maintains that he wants to give it when they told him to write it. Because since they had a kingdom from him, they, 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 they took a, a, there's different forms of kinyan. And here what we're talking about is what's called a, a, a kinyan where it clarifies his intent. And from they did a, he gave them an item or they gave him an item to demonstrate that this is a valid sale. So therefore, under those circumstances, we're going to say he do, we, they don't need to ask him if he's if he maintains his position. And because Stam Kenyan looks only. So we say that the, the Kenyan was for sure uh, an indication that he for sure wants to give this as a gift. But low Kanumine, but if they didn't do a Kenyan, then we're going to say. If the person giving the gift did not do a Kenyan with uh, people we told to, to the witnesses, then we're going to say, the, in Pumpadisa, they said he does not need to, they don't need to ask, whereas the people in Matamachasi said they need to go, they, they need to go back and ask. But in Pumpadisa, they said you don't need to ask. And this is why Rashi said, even though they didn't do a, a Kenyan, but because he told them to write it, they don't need to go back and do a Kenyan. Meaning to say, they, excuse me, since they did the Kenyan, they don't need to go back and ask him because once they did the Kenyan, that's, that's proof that he's, that he, that he's, he really intends to give it as a gift. And the law is that they need to go back and clarify for sure before they give it that that was really his intent. Says the Gemara, well, let's go on to the next sugya that our Mishnah had discussed, that if you give her a Tosefes Ksuva, if the husband gives her a Tosefes Ksuva, and then he dies before the Nisuim, before they're fully married, he dies in between the betrothal and the full marriage, the Chachamim say that it's a valid, it's a valid, that Chachamim say that he still has to pay out, the state has to pay out the Tosefes Ksuva, where Sir Belezer Ben-Azariah says, 
If he died before the Nisuin, he only pays out the base ksuba, but not the Tosefes ksuba. Because, says Rebbe Lezer ben Azariah, Rebbe Lezer ben Azariah says, that he only wrote this Tosefes ksuba because he intended to fully marry her. In this case, he's not going to be able to fully marry her. So he didn't intend to give her the Tosefes ksuba. So he analyzed he analyzed what the man was intending when he promised her this money. So the Gemara says, this, the Gemara understands that this is something that's called an umdina. Umdina means like an analysis that we understand what the real intent behind the person who wrote the contract was, that he intended only to give her the money, says it was a Zarya, in a circumstance where they were fully married. So the says, in Marav Rabbi One says the law is like Rabbi Wazir ben Azari, one says the law is not like Rabbi Wazir ben Azari. So, Chad Amar Halacha Rabbi Wazir ben Azari. So let's say it is time to Rabbi Nasan who damar Halacha Rabbi Wazir ben Azari. Let's say that uh, Rabbi Nasan is the one who says the law is like Rabbi Wazir ben Azari. The Shamil and Rabbi Nasan the Azil Basar Umdina because we know that Rabbi Nasan. In general, throughout Shas, he has the shita, he has the position that he assumes that we can make an we can say, make an umdana, we can make a conjecture as to what the real thought process of the one who made the contract was, and we can rely upon that. And that's like Rebbe Lazar ben Azariah saying, here we can make an umdana that he only intended to give her the Tosefis if they got fully married. Because how do we know that Rebbe Nelson says we follow an umdana? Rash says umdana is omir das. That we we go down to the intent, but it's something that's not clear. We we weigh it, and we say that this is most people. This would be their intent. So the first case where where the case where Rabbi Nazan says we follow an umdina is he says shall So first let's say he says the laws like Rabbi Shimon Shazuri in a case of Masukan. This the case of Masukan is discussed in Masechas Gitin. Where if a person goes out on a, uh, to the sea, or he goes out on the caravan, and he says, write a gift for my wife, then even though he didn't say write it and give it, we can say that you write the get and give the get. Because we say that Mahmas Tiridasa, because he was so preoccupied that uh, for his life, when he's going out to sea, he's going on a caravan, he didn't have time. And so therefore, he intended really to say write it and give it. Whereas Rabbi Shimon Suzuri says, not only the case of the person who goes out to the sea, but also the case of the person who is very sick or is in danger of his life. And we say, clearly such a person is not playing games. He's not writing a get to save for later. He's writing it to give it. And so therefore, since he's, so therefore we could say that he intended to give it there. So that's Rabbi Shimon Suzuri is saying a case that we call that an umdina. And what's the next case where Rabbi Nelson says, we follow Rabbi Shimon Chizuri. This is not a case of Umdana. We just threw in the statement because we're saying where Rabbi Nelson says the law is like Rabbi Shimon Chizuri on the top of 55b. This is the case of Trumas Meiser Shel Demai. This is the case of Trumas Meiser, the tithe of the Levite, which then, we, which has Demai, which is a case of Demai. So let's say Demai is the, the produce of the Amarats, which were uncertain if it was tithed or not, so we have to tie that out of a doubt. So this is Rashi tells us Mishnah Iba Masechas Demai. This is a Mishnah in Tractate Demai. Trumas Meiser Shal Demai. Let's say you have the Truma. After the Levite gets his tithe, he has to take another tithe called Truma and give it to the coin. So Trumas Meiser Shal Demai Shechazorim Koma, and then it fell back into the barrel you took it from. And now the, it's too much. There's too much. Truma there, the ratio is higher than the chulin, and so therefore a non kohen can eat it. Rabbi Shimon Shazuri says, Af b'chol, even though it's not Shabbos and, uh, and we maybe would have been more lenient, nevertheless, even during the week, Sholo Ama Aretz, you ask the Ama Aretz, Shalaka Chimenu you ask the Ama Aretz who, who, who bought these fruits, and we can rely upon him to eat. And if he says, actually, I designated the miser properly, you can you can rely upon him, and therefore you're going to say. And so since the uh, so since the rabbis believe him rabbinically, and in this case where there's a loss because you can't separate it now, so rather all you can do is you'd only be able to sell to the kohanim, 
So therefore, you can rely upon it. Therefore, you can rely upon it and say, actually, it didn't need true must my, it didn't need true must my, sir. It was tithe in the first place. And so therefore, the, the Levite didn't have to uh, take true must my, sir, from it. It already had it taken. So, so this is the case. This is the case of Chumas Meiser of Demai. Vira, so the Gemara says, what? So Rabbi Nassim follows Umdina of Rav, who also bosser Umdina. And Rav does not follow Umdina. Rav does not say we can go down to see the person's real intent. But we work. So let's say you have a gift of a Shrivmara. Shrivmara's gift is actually, uh, Raji tells us, in general does not need a formal Kenyan. Because the sage has instituted that the Shrimara's words are like they are written down. It's like they already handed over because we don't want to make him go crazy with the bureaucracy. But let's say he wrote, he wrote in it a Kenyan, and Rob is going to say that it is like you're riding on two camels at the same time. Meaning to say he gave it two strengths, two powers. One was because it was written in it. Uh, and 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 every expression of a shlimura, and every gift of a shlimura also has the uh, one on one hand it has the power of the shlimura, which means he's able to renege, and on the other hand it has the the power of the kenyan of the that it, that it's a healthy gift, and there's the power of the healthy gift as the gemara is going to explain in a moment. Rashi tells us, even though the gemara tells us in a moment, but Rashi is the great teacher; he wants us to know now. Says Koach Matana Spari, what's the strength of the gift of the healthy person? And if he got that, if he recovered from his illness, then he's not able to he's not able to renege on it. That's why he put in Kenyan in there to say I can't renege on this. But a shlimmerah, but the person who's very sick can. And it's like the gift of a shlimmerah, Rashi tells us that that what's the strength there? That if he wrote in this gift, if he wrote in this gift, Helvesi shall veti uponi nisuna uponi that if he wrote the, the loan that I gave to you, that I gave to this man, I'm giving it now to this other person, that's okay by a shlimmerah, but, but by a healthy person, you can't do that. So these are the, each one, the shlimmerah and the bari, they both have strengths to it. And so, so Rav is saying, and he intended to do both. Shmuel says, well, actually, I don't know what his intent was. And so therefore we can't do either one. Let's see what this means. And the Gemara says, Rav Mishmei the Rav Amri. In the in the Academy of Rav, they taught in the name of Rav. Then what does this mean? Harei Kimatanas Arkevei Atrei Rishi. Harei Kimatanas Bari. Harei Kimatanas Shlimra. That it's like he's riding on two camels and has the strength of a gift of a healthy person. The gift and the strength of the gift of a Shlimra. Harei Kimatanas Bari. It's like the gift gift of a healthy person. That if he if he recovered, uh, even though normally a shlimra could recant, in this case he can't recant. And it's like the gift of a of a shlimra. Sheem amar halvesi leponi halvaaso leponi. If he says I I gave um, my loan, my note on this person, I'm giving it to you. That's going to be a good transference of the power. Ushmuel says. Shmuel says, actually, I don't know what his intent was because he has language in there of a shlimra, language in there of a gift of a healthy person. And maybe his whole intent was, uh, was he wanted to, to give it over only through the writing of the star like a gift of a healthy person. Because we say, Shastam, we say that, that, that when you make a Kenyan, it's in, you're intending to write it. And the contract of Shlimra does not is not transferred while he's still alive because he didn't intend to give anything while he's alive. And so, so therefore he says, I'm giving this to you through a contract which will only take place after my death. And we say, so a contract does not take uh, place after the death. And because a person can't give a gift after he dies, a person can only gift a gift while he's alive. So, so therefore, the Gemara says, "Ela travail azli basar So we say actually, both 
So, so Rav says umdina and Rabbi Nassim says umdina. So we must say both of them, both Rav and Rabbi Nassim say we follow the umdina. The one who says the laws like Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah is Shabir. It was obviously Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah says umdina. The one who says the law is not Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah. Because here too, the rabbis are also, uh, you can also go down to the essence of their position. Why? That why is he why is he giving her the full soup the tosefes even though they didn't end up fully married because Mishim Ikuve died too. That's the whole reason why he promised the tosefes was to find favor in her eyes. Well, Ikuve died and here indeed he did find favor in her eyes. Yosef Chanina came to Rabbi Yana. We come our Allah of Rabbi Lazar ben Azaria. Rabbi Chanina said in front of Rabbi Yana, the law is like Rabbi Lazar ben Azaria. I'm a way book Kori Karach Barak. Go read your brisa outside. The was now I came in. Says the laws like Rebbe was of Nazaria. I'm not going to show Allah Rebbe was of Nazaria. I'm not going to die. I'm in Allah Rebbe was of Nazaria. Whereas in our day, I'm not going to show Allah Rebbe was of Nazaria. And even though I forgot the lot of Nachman, the Amar called Diana to die in Rebbe was of Nazaria. Even though Nachman cursed anybody who said the laws like Rebbe was of Nazaria, I feel Allah Allah Rebbe was of Nazaria. So we say the laws like Rebbe Lazar ben Azari. So if he promises her the Ksuba, this Tosefes, and she doesn't make it to the Nisuin, she doesn't get it. Uh, and he doesn't make it to the Nisuin, she doesn't get the Tosefes Ksuba. Okay, we'll stop here. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to address them.